Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today is a very exciting day because a question I get asked a lot about the Oculus Quest is, hey Mike, can I connect it to a PC to play Steam VR games? And I've always replied, it might happen in the future, but just don't count on it up until now. Because yesterday the team at Riftcat released their first version of Riftcat and V-Ridge for the Oculus Quest. Now, using these applications, it allows you to wirelessly stream Steam VR content directly to your Oculus Quest from your PC. And that's with full room scale tracking of the headset and the controllers. Pretty impressive stuff. Now, this video is actually sponsored by Riftcat and they've provided a 10% discount for all of my subscribers. So if you want to buy a lifetime license to unlock their software for unlimited use, I've put a link to it in the description down below. Now, the process to get this up and running can be quite technical, so please be warned. And I'll try and explain it as best as I can in this guide to make it as easy as possible for you to follow along. Now, once the setup is complete and you're up and running, things do get very simple and easy to use from then on. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to install ADB, sideload V-Ridge, run Riftcat on your PC, and then stream Steam VR games wirelessly to your Quest headset. I'll put timestamps to everything in the description down below as always. I hope you guys and girls find this guide useful and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into the guide, I just want to show you what you can expect from running V-Ridge on the Quest right now and set your expectations accordingly. Now the footage that you can see right now has been recorded directly onto the Quest headset. Now please bear in mind this is the first build of V-Ridge and there's plenty of room for improvement in the future. Some things work great, like room scale tracking works surprisingly well. You're free to move around your play space freely, and that's directly translated in-game. Same with the controllers. However, how it looks in the headset is heavily dependent on how fast your Wi-Fi connection is, and ideally you'll need a 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection before even considering using this with your Quest. The other big issue, and definitely worth bearing in mind, is that the controller button mapping isn't matched right now, as the controllers represented in VR are Vive controllers. Now this means that in some games the buttons just won't function well on the Oculus controllers, so please be aware of that. For example, in the games that I tested, like in Winlands 2, the jump button isn't present. In Arizona Sunshine, you can't reload properly. And in Gorn, you can only move using one hand. Playing Beat Saber was just fine though, of course, because there's very few buttons you need to push in that game. So although streaming VR games does work to your Oculus Quest headset, and it's a very promising start, just be aware of the limitations right now. Hopefully this can be approved upon in future updates. However, if you want to experiment with this right now, stick around and follow the step-by-step -step guide. So now I've set your expectations appropriately, let's start with the equipment that you'll need. Of course, first up you'll need an Oculus Quest. You'll then need a Type-C to Type-A USB cable to connect the Quest to your PC. Now you won't be able to use the cable that comes in the box with the Quest unless you have a Type-C connector on your PC. Now you'll also need a Wi-Fi router, again ideally a 5 GHz one. 2.4 GHz will just about work, but it won't provide a good experience, so please bear that in mind. Now I've been using a TP-Link Archer 5 GHz router for this test, which has been pretty solid so far. If you're interested, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. You'll also need a VR capable PC. Now if you're unsure if your PC is up to scratch, check out the compatibility tool which I've linked in the description down below. This will run a quick test on your system to see if your PC meets the minimum requirements. Also, something to note is that there is an issue with PCs equipped with AMD cards running V-Ridge and Riftcat at the moment, and although the devs are working on it, it may take a bit of time before that update is released. So let's jump into the step-by-step -step guides and start with step one, we need to enable developer mode on your Oculus account. So using a browser, head over to the Oculus dashboard and I've put a link directly to it in the description down below. Log in using your Oculus account and click on create new organization. In the box here, you can enter whatever name you want for your organization and just click submit. Agree to the terms and conditions and click agree. And now we need to head over to the Oculus app on your mobile device. 
Next, you'll want to ensure that your Oculus Quest is turned on and on the same Wi-Fi network as your mobile device. Head over to the settings and then look for your Oculus Quest. Once it's connected, you'll then have a drop-down menu to select more settings and within that, you'll see developer mode in the list. Tap on that and ensure the toggle within developer mode is turned on. Now just be aware that when developer mode is enabled from here on out, you'll need to use ADB to connect your Quest to your PC every time in the future to transfer files. And I'll cover that more later on in the guide. Next, we'll need to install Steam VR on your PC if it's not installed already, and advanced Steam settings. Assuming you have Steam installed on your PC and you have a Steam account, navigate to library and tools within Steam and scroll down to Steam VR. Click install and that should download and install SteamVR within your Steam account and then all you need to do is restart your PC. I'd also recommend installing advanced Steam settings as this will allow you to fix things on the fly from the Steam menu within VR if you're stuck in the floor for example when you start Steam or you need to slightly adjust your play space within the Steam VR environment. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below and then scroll down to the advanced Steam settings installer. Click on releases and download the latest installer. Once it's downloaded, run the installer and then that is step two done. The next thing we need to do is download Riftcat, the VRidge APK for Quest and ADB. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge. Now first click on the Riftcat link in the description below to download Riftcat. Now click on the second link in the description and scroll down to download both VRidge APK for Quest and ADB. Now there is an automated method described on the site, however I'm going to show you how to do all this manually as it will make it much easier for you in the future if you want to sideload other games and apps on your Quest and also when you want to transfer files to and from your PC. Now we should have these three files downloaded on our system. Next let's install Riftcat on your PC which is really straightforward, just run through the installation. Once that's done close Riftcat and go back to your download folder. Go to your ADB platform tool zip and unzip the folder using an application like WinRAR. I've put a link to WinRAR in the description down below if you need it. To unzip, just simply right click on the file and select extract here. Once the platform tools folder has been extracted, you need to move the VRidge APK file inside that folder. Now open the platform tools folder and copy the complete contents of the directory and you'll want to copy this over to your C drive, users, and your name folder. Now this might seem like a really strange step, but this is going to make things much easier in the future, especially if you're not familiar with using command line to navigate folders within the command line. So now that's done, that is step three complete. Step four, now we're going to install ADB and install VRidge on your Quest. Now all you need to do is connect your Quest to your PC using a USB-C to USB-A cable. Now we want to open the command prompt terminal on your PC. Now navigate to the bottom left of your taskbar in Windows and click on the search bar. Within there type in CMD and this will open the command prompt terminal which is a text interface. I know it looks a little bit daunting but there's just a few commands to enter and then we're pretty much done. All you need to do is type in ADB, hit return and then this will be displayed. Now we need to type ADB space devices. Now if everything was done correctly you should see the serial number of your Quest listed. If it says unauthorized you'll need to put your Quest headset on and authorize the notification pop-up within the headset that asks to allow USB debugging. Once you've done this once you shouldn't need to do this ever again. Now type ADB devices again and it should look like this in the list with your Quest serial number. Whilst your Quest is in developer mode you'll need to use ADB and ADB devices to connect it to your PC in future so you can transfer files. So just please be aware of that. Next all we need to do is type in ADB space install space minus G space VRidge Quest 1 Dot apk. A little tip here is that once you've typed VR you should be able to press the tab button and it'll auto populate vridge quest 1.apk. Hit return and if installed correctly you should see a success notification. Now that's the most complicated part done, let's move on to the next step.
When you put the Quest headset on now and you navigate to library and on the left, you'll find V-Ridge in the list. Open up the application and it will take you to a holding screen whilst it waits for the PC to connect. Now you can run RiftCat on your PC and it's free to try for 10 minutes per session once you've logged in. If you want to buy a license, it's $15 or 15 euros for a lifetime license for unlimited use. There is a link in the description down below for a 10% discount for my subscribers if you're interested in buying a license yourself. Now all you need to do on your PC is press the play button and you'll get this pop up. Now on your PC you can adjust the stream quality on the fly and also toggle to stream audio from the game to your Quest headset. Now I found using the simple settings and the default slider on 8 I had a good balance of performance and visual clarity. You can go even further with this and tweak things in the advanced settings but in my experience so far it really did make that much of a difference even pushing the resolution up to 1440p. You'll see in the headset now that you'll be taken to the Steam VR home where you can see your controllers are represented by Vive controllers and here you can choose a game you want to play. Now that's that step done and now for the final step we just need to tweak things and make sure everything's running okay. Now I had some issues running through the Steam VR room setup so that's why I'd recommend using advanced Steam settings to tweak your play area and fix the floor if you need to. What I experienced when I first started Steam VR within the Quest, I was stuck midway in the floor. All you need to do is press the Steam menu button, navigate to advanced settings and go to floor fix, put a control on the floor and it should sort that out for you. Also here you can easily adjust your play space to make sure you're correctly centered within the VR environment. Within the advanced Steam settings menu you can also tweak other things like super sampling and you can also go back to the RiftCat advanced settings to tweak the bit rate and resolution and other bits and pieces in there if you want to mess around with it. So now that's all set up now you can experiment playing some Steam VR games and have some fun. So let's quickly jump to my conclusion before we wrap up the video. Now I think this is a promising start for Riftcat and V-Ridge on the Oculus Quest, however it does need some more work before I can fully recommend it. The image quality is okay, even on the best settings running at 1440p, however it's not exactly sharp and clear as you'd expect when using a traditional PC VR headset. The setup is fairly complicated and the worst part is the emulated controllers are Vive controllers, which causes button mapping issues in game using the Oculus Touch controllers. So it's fine for experimenting experimenting with right now, but if you're on the fence, it might be worth waiting just a little bit longer. However, if it does improve, you can just follow this guide and most of it will still apply. Okay, so there we have it guys and girls. That's how to play Steam VR games on your Oculus Quest wirelessly streamed from your PC using RiftCat and V-Ridge. Thanks again to the RiftCat team for sponsoring this video and for providing a 10% discount for all my subscribers to purchase a lifetime license of their software. I've put a link to it in the description down below. Now I really wasn't expecting this to work so well and to be up and running so soon after the launch of the Quest. Obviously it's not as smooth or as clear as connecting a proper PC VR headset to a PC but it's just about good enough if you have a fast enough Wi-Fi connection. Ideally you'll want one that's 5 GHz. Now it still has some things that can be improved upon but bear in mind this is the first version. Particularly the controller mapping as that's the biggest issue right now because the controllers look like Vive controllers and they're mapped as Vive controllers as well which doesn't correlate well to the Rift controllers, but hopefully this can be resolved in a future update. Using a gamepad connected to your PC also works by the way, so if you want to play seated experiences like Subnautica or Project Cars for example, you totally can. But let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments down below and I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. Also let me know what you think, can you see yourself using this setup to play Steam VR games on the Oculus Quest? If so, what games are you planning to play? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.